as the scripture is read. Today's reading is from Acts 28, 23 through 31. As after they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning till evening, he explained the matter to him, them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other as they were leaving. Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah, Go to this people and say, You will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this, pe <coughs> Sorry. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing. And they have shut their eyes, so they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart and turn, and I will hear, w would heal them. Let it be known to you, then, that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Yeah, Hello. this would be a really good time. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were caught up in something Sorry. there. Yeah, go. Cool. It's, it's time. Yeah. You weren't um, more as loud as you were. Well, maybe a little loud. Yeah, yeah. Because I was enjoying the silence, and then all of a sudden I heard this old folk song that, you know, <laughs> I didn't know if it should be sung here. But, you know, you were, I didn't want to interrupt you, but you were a little loud. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we're, right, we're ready for you if you're old. I'm ready. Yeah, good, good, let's go. <laughs> Silliness. <laughs> Silliness. Truth be told, most of us in this room who know that song are retired. <laughs> Some of us who know that song. Well, a lot of people have come and gone. That song was written by a couple of guys named Simon and Garfunkel. It was released in 1962. If you can remember 1962, you're too old. <laughs> it was a song that was really calling the nation to listen to the message of peace and caring and love. It was a hit song, but it missed the mark. It missed the mark because it forgot about God. It missed the mark because the people are still silent. When Paul was shipwrecked, he had told the people on the boat, he said, don't go, but they, of course, chose to go anyhow because the, the captain of the boat said it would be all right. There was a good wind blowing, and they'd be able to make it to Rome. But, of course, they didn't. They shipwrecked on a, an island called Malta. But as Paul predicted, the, the ship was completely destroyed, but nobody lost their lives. And uh, hearing that, the people began to really listen to what he had to say. Uh, the people of Malta built him a fire, and, and as he was putting some wood on the fire, uh, Paul picked up a stick, and as he picked it up, there was a viper, uh, a snake, that was laying underneath that stick, and it got angry right away, and it grabbed hold of his hand. It was a deadly viper, a deadly snake. Paul just 
wiggled it off into the fire and threw the stick in, and he just kept going, and the people kept watching, and they were waiting for him to collapse, and they were waiting for him to die. And many of them said, you know, that viper was sent by the gods so that uh, he would be shown to be uh, nobody to listen to. But he didn't get sick, and he didn't die. And the people said, what's going on here? And we've been asking that same question for the last couple thousand years. What's going on here? Paul was an incredible man. He was a strange man. He, uh, he could be so sweet and kind and caring and so angry and so harsh in what he'd say. But the people listened because the message he had was a, a message they needed to hear. What reminded me of that song, uh, called The Sound of Silence, by the way, uh, was the verse that said, the, uh, and in the naked light I saw uh, 10,000 people, maybe more, people talking without speaking, people hearing without listening. And I thought, gee, you know, they didn't know it probably, or maybe they did, but they were really quoting Isaiah just like Paul quoted Isaiah in our scripture today. Isaiah said, you will indeed listen but never understand, and you will indeed look but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. Turn and be healed. Paul was speaking to the most powerful group of Jews in Rome. He had finally been taken there by boat. He was still under arrest, but the people were so very lenient with him that they said, go ahead and go around the city all you want to. Go ahead and preach if you want to about this God of yours, and, and if you can get people to listen, that's fine. Paul said, I want to talk to the highest, highest muckety-muck of all the Jews around. He said, Okay. They gathered them together. And, and this is what Paul said to them from Isaiah. And he said to them, are you people who cannot hear? Are you people who cannot see? There is one who has come to save you. There is one who has come to heal you. Okay, so flip a couple thousand years forward. Remembering that Paul didn't just speak to anybody, he spoke to the most powerful and arrogant enemies of this message that he brought that were around in, in Rome. But he said what he had to say, and indeed some of them even listened. And like Caleb read to us, it, it was kind of amazing because instead of uh, them condemning Paul outright, they began to argue among themselves, and some of them began to, to hear the validity of the message that Paul was speaking, and they sort of unstopped their ears, and they sort of uncovered their eyes, and they thought, wow, could this be the Messiah that we have anticipated for over 3,000 years? And some of them said yes. Move 2,000 years forward to us. The message of Paul is as valid today as it was then. Are we willing to hear? Not just listen, but hear. Hear so that we have understanding. Are we willing to uncover our eyes so that we can see that the one and only way we will ever find salvation ever find the presence of God real in our lives is by looking to the man Jesus Christ, the God Jesus Christ, the one who died for us and the one who lives for us. And maybe we don't think about this every week when we come together, but 
But that's what brings us here, isn't it? To hear about this God-man who has changed everything. To hear about this God-man Jesus who cares about you and about me personally and individually and who loves us so much that he calls us together like we are today. And what a treat. The church, the church is a place that uh, we come to to be refreshed, renewed, revitalized. But the basic reason for this church or any church this service or any service to exist is not to get what we can, but to prepare us for what we can give. The church is not about holding us. The church is about sending us. And the church is not about helping us feel good about ourselves but having the strength to go out and help people who are so hurting in this world find goodness within themselves through Jesus Christ. So how are we doing? Uh, I don't get to be up here every day, so I can sort of be honest and hide <laughs> under a rock next week. Actually, I'm not going to be here next week, am I? That's right. <laughs> How are we doing as a church? Now, I think we're doing pretty well, to be very honest about it. I, as I look every Sunday that I'm here, um, the children have great lessons that make them feel their worth through Jesus. The youth who are going through all of those changes in their lives are grabbing hold of some wonderful, wonderful messages from the youth director and they are holding those tight to themselves. The adults with their new leader are, are just in incredible kinds of, uh, of learnings that are taking place not just on Sundays but through the week. The church has the gift of two incredibly gifted preachers. But how are we doing? Because the message and, the, and the, the, uh, the worth of a church is found not on how it gathers together, but on what happens when we leave. So how's the church doing here? We have to answer that by saying, what am I doing when I walk out those doors? Where am I carrying the message of Jesus? Am I taking it to the people who need it most? Or am I holding on to it like a precious gem and keeping it in my pocket until next Sunday? And I'm not standing here as a preacher now. I'm standing here as a parishioner in this church like you are. And I have to ask myself that question. And that answer says whether this church is doing what it needs to do. And I can't answer that for you, nor can you answer it for me. But we are the people who've been called by God to, to come together in this community of faith. We're the people who are able, like Paul, to carry the message out to, a, to a group, groups of people who are just hurting so badly. I it breaks my heart to turn on the news anymore, doesn't it yours? There's never anything in there that, that doesn't include at least some shooting. You know, the, the, the horror that took place in, in Texas was followed by, oh yes, and we had two other shootings in, in Toledo last night. And then they went on with their other news, like, oh well, just one more time. There is a world out there who is hurting. We feel the hope of God through his son, but they don't. What did I read? 19% of people 
uh, under 40, 19% are in church. 19%. Where are the rest of everybody? The ones that need it really, really, really need it most are the ones who are taking a gun and killing people to see how many they can kill before they're killed. Paul could have been quiet when he went to Rome. Paul may have been able to convince the, the emperor that he was not guilty of anything for which to be killed. We don't know. What we do know is that Paul was not silent and Paul was not keeping his faith to himself, but he went out and he shared it with everybody he saw. We're not going to do that. Well, I'm not going to do that. But I keep thinking there are some people that I could share about this church with that may be interested to come in and just see what's going on. Uh, we have a neighbor across the street, fantastic people, have two little kids. I can't even tell you their last name, but I'm going to be able to because I am going to meet them and I am going to ask them if they have a place to go to worship because I don't see them pulling out of their driveway on a Sunday morning or pulling back in. So maybe, just maybe, those are people I can talk to, wonderful people, but people who don't have the gift of grace that you and I have. Folks, we cannot be silent when we leave this church. We cannot pretend not to hear the pain and agony of the world around us. We just can't do that. And then come back the next week and say, I've done well, God. Please, join me in trying to find ways to share this incredible good news with others so that they might be able to find their worth in life a worth that begins at birth and ends, no, begins at birth and goes to eternity. I wanted to share a personal message for just a second because uh, I left the first service um, when my brother Myron was uh, preaching with tears in my eyes. And then I see him sitting back here so quietly <laughs> in this service, Myron. You were a blessing this morning. You brought to us a message of hope in the midst of your pain. And it brings tears to my eyes and yet hope to my heart. Because you see, my dear brother Myron's wife died last week. And he preached today with power. The message of God's anchor, the hold that we have to have in our lives so that we are not shipwrecked. So I just want to say thank you, Myron. You are a blessing. And when he had said these words to the Jewish leaders, the Jews departed arguing viciously among themselves. What kind of words did Paul use that would cause people who came in unified to see him dead, but leaving with at least part of that group saying, I don't only see no culpability in this man, I see great hope through this man. Wouldn't it be great if we could have some really powerful conversation with people beyond these walls so that they too might be able to hear and begin to get a little idea that maybe there's more Maybe there's better. Maybe there's God. Enough. I thank you for the gift of being here. I'm going to join you now. I'm going to go over and sit down. I'm going to join you because that's where I belong now. And I'm going to join you in listening to my own words. And I hope you will as well. 
and that we can go forth from this place to share the good news of Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we, get, we gather and in his name that we pray as we come to this time of communion. Almighty God, thank you for the gift of your presence, for the gift of the witnesses through the ages who have brought us messages so powerful that we cannot ignore them. We thank you, O God, that you have given us your Son, not only given him as a teacher, but given him as a sacrifice, that our sins might be carried on his sinless shoulders and carried to a cross and die there. We thank you, O God, for the, the immeasurable gift of your Son who on the night that he was betrayed took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take this, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and having given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant to be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus said, as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Lord God, make these common elements that we have every day be transformed into a powerful presence of you in our lives. Help us, dear Lord, to be changed. Help them to become the body and blood of Christ so that we might become the blood of Christ and the body of Christ revealed to the world. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Here, ready. I want to invite the servers to come forward.